Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia, and although there's no cure, certain medications can be used to help mitigate some of the symptoms and improve the client's quality of life. Now, these medications can be broadly divided into two classes, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors and NMDA receptor antagonists. Starting with acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, these include rivastigmine, galantamine, and donepazil. Acetylcholinesterase inhibitors are taken orally, while rivastigmine can be taken in the form of a transdermal patch as well as orally. Once absorbed into the bloodstream, they travel to the brain. Here, they inhibit the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, which normally breaks down the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. As a result, acetylcholine builds up in the synaptic cleft, causing increased and prolonged effects. And since there's some evidence suggesting that Alzheimer's disease is related to low levels of acetylcholine in the brain, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors can help improve symptoms. However, increased acetylcholine levels can also cause cholinergic side effects like meiosis, blurred vision, headaches, dizziness, and drowsiness. At the same time, in the airways, acetylcholine triggers bronchoconstriction and increases bronchial secretions, which can manifest with dyspnea and a persistent cough. In the cardiovascular system, acetylcholine slows down the heart rate and reduces blood pressure, which can result in bradycardia, heart block, hypotension, and even cardiac arrest. In the gastrointestinal tract, these medications can cause increased motility and secretions, leading to nausea, vomiting, cramps, diarrhea, increased salivation, and involuntary defecation, or even gastrointestinal bleeding. Finally, in the urinary tract, acetylcholine stimulates the bladder muscles and sphincter relaxation, which may cause a sense of urgency. As far as contraindications go, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors should be used with caution in clients with bradycardia, as well as those with intestinal or urinary obstruction. Acetylcholinesterase inhibitors should also be used with caution during pregnancy or while breastfeeding, as well as in clients with epilepsy or a history of seizures, as well as asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, arrhythmias, coronary artery disease, as well as peptic ulcer disease, and severe hepatic or renal impairment. Next, there are NMDA receptor antagonists, the most common of which is memantine, which is taken orally. As their name implies, NMDA receptor antagonists work by blocking N-methyl-D aspartate, or NMDA receptors in the brain. In Alzheimer's disease, there's too much of a neurotransmitter called glutamate, which binds to NMDA receptors and allows an excessive influx of calcium, ultimately causing neuronal damage and cellular death. So, NMDA receptor antagonists can limit the calcium influx and prevent neuronal damage. Now, side effects commonly associated with NMDA receptor antagonists include drowsiness, headache, and agitation. Other side effects include nausea, vomiting, and either constipation or diarrhea. Finally, NMDA receptor antagonists should be used with caution in pregnant or breastfeeding clients, as well as those with epilepsy or a history of seizures and severe hepatic or renal impairment. Okay, before administering either an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor or a NMDA receptor antagonist, First, perform a baseline assessment that includes weight, vital signs, hepatic and renal function, as well as cardiac and respiratory function. Also assess cognitive and behavioral function, such as memory, reasoning, mood, and ability to perform activities of daily living. Then teach your client why the medication is prescribed and how it will help slow the progression of their disease. Stress the importance of taking their medication as directed and not to stop taking it abruptly. Lastly, remind them that drowsiness and dizziness are common side effects of both acetylcholinesterase inhibitors or NMDA receptor antagonists, and advise them to make position changes slowly and to use caution with ambulation. Now, if an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor is prescribed, teach your client to take their medication with food to reduce gastric upset, and advise them to contact their healthcare provider right away if they develop symptoms such as a cough or trouble breathing or if they develop problems like diarrhea or urinary urgency. If an NMDA receptor antagonist is prescribed, let your client know they can take their medication with or without food. If they're prescribed a liquid form, teach them how to use the provided oral solution dispenser, 
and instruct them not to mix the medication with any other liquids. Remind them to store the medication at room temperature in a dry place. And because the medication's clearance from the body is reduced by alkaline urine, stress the importance of eating a balanced diet with a variety of foods which can help maintain the urine pH within normal limits. During treatment, periodically monitor your client's weight, vital signs, hepatic and renal function, as well as cardiac and respiratory function. Assess your client's mental and behavioral status as you continue to evaluate the effectiveness of treatment. All right, as a quick recap, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors and NMDA receptor antagonists can be used to help slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease and improve your client's quality of life. Acetylcholinesterase inhibitors work in the brain by inhibiting the enzyme acetylcholinesterase to allow for acetylcholine to build up in the synaptic cleft, potentially improving symptoms. Cholinergic side effects of acetylcholinesterase inhibitors include nausea, diarrhea, urinary urgency, bronchospasm, and bradycardia. NMDA receptor antagonists work by blocking N-methyl-D-aspartate receptors in the brain, which limits the influx of calcium and reduces neuronal damage and cellular death. Nursing considerations include obtaining a baseline assessment and evaluating cognitive functioning before therapy begins, providing client education, monitoring for side effects, and evaluating the effectiveness of therapy. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.